Hey everybody, I'm back with uh, Dr. Herring. We can look at the camera for right now, Doc. Oh, oh, <laughs> I brought up some memories for him. So okay. here's what's going to happen. We're going to go. We're going to walk down memory lane with with Doc um, via his his photos from Vietnam, and um, and then Shelton with the, through the magic of editing, we'll put the superimpose the photos so you can see them. So let's just the 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 prelude to this is why do you have so many pictures from Vietnam? I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you did. Well, I, I, you know, it, it, I didn't. I just wanted to record what we were doing and what we did. There was no, it, there was no ultimate purpose to it. It was just I had a camera, a little 104 instamatic camera with one two six film, mm -hmm. and we were taking Kodachrome slides, uh, which have held up as opposed to regular stuff, and just kind of give a an idea of what we did and, wh and how how we did it. So. Um, so I had seen some of your stuff before I went to Iraq, and that motivated me to take photographs while I was in Iraq. Yeah. And so I took a bunch. And so maybe sometime we'll sit down and do this with my photographs. Well, I'll be glad to. <laughs> so I'll ask you if you have the same thing. I, I took you, – you said you took 1,400? 1,400 slides, right. Do you wish you'd have taken 14,000? Well, the, the, the problem – I mean, the just, logistics. No, no, I just uh, mean... Yes, I wish I'd taken 14,000. Yeah. But the logistics, okay, we were on fire bases in the mountains. you got to get no, stuff in. No, and no, get, no, no, I get it. But I'm, I'm just saying, broadly speaking, philosophically, I took a ton of pictures. Yeah. I wish I'd have taken 10 tons of well, pictures. Well, yeah, we all do. We all uh, do. I think there's a lot of people you know, that... One way or the other. And it, it captures something in, in your life... Uh, uh, you know, as to where we were and what we were doing and, and the whole thing. And I don't, I don't want to be too modest, but I think some of my pictures are better than what are in the oh, textbooks yeah. and everything oh, like yeah. that. Absolutely. And uh, uh, it, it's just weird to have this. And um, uh, the only thing my pictures don't bring is the smell. Right. Okay. If we could get the smell, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 if you're like me, though, when you see certain photos, you can, you can, still probably smell it pretty good. Tell them. Okay, so these um, these first photos are labeled. Your label is is Agent Orange, and we're looking at photo number one now. What are we seeing? Oh, what you're seeing, we are at Bass Stone. Okay, you have a kind of a a path. Uh, down to the uh, uh, VIP pad where the uh, special people came in, visitors and everything like that. This was not the log pad. And all of these things are 155 canisters mm -hmm. that have been, you know, made that, into a, a, a sidewalk, so to speak. Right. So the special people, you know, the generals and all that sort of thing can come in uh, unhampered. Now, on this, on this, in the background, you're looking at where Highway 547 that goes from way out to the Ashaw Valley begins for us. Also, you're seeing two things. One, you're seeing the mist, but you're also maybe seeing the smoke. But because of Agent Orange and because of the H and I fire, this stuff was on fire all the time and burning, and, and we were breathing the stuff and everything like that. And it just 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 gives you the Dante's Inferno is what right. I what I said earlier and the starkness. When you look at this, what they would do is they would bring in these little bulldozer things under under a Chinook, okay? And then they would dig holes in the ground, trenches, and that would be your bunker. Well, when it wasn't raining, uh, you know, everything was dusty. When it did rain, everything caved in on you except the talk generally and the combo, mm -hmm. combo bunker because they were important. But for the rest of us, we got all washed out because, you know, it just... Well, right. uh, and that's just the way the rain went. Ready for the next picture? Yeah, go ahead with the next one. Okay, this is beginning to show you the effect of Agent Orange. Okay, all of this is dead. Every bit of this is dead. Wait a minute. We're looking at basically the same picture we just looked at a moment right. ago with the with the artillery cases You're lining. Right. Yeah, right. This is the same place? This is Bastogne. But it's the same p place as the first picture? Right. Oh, my gosh. But all of this... When we got there, when I got there in April, all of this was green. No, I got it, yeah. And uh, this is probably coming back. This is October, November, probably October. All of this is dead now. Oh, wow. Okay, next picture. Okay, now this is the tree. Right here is the tree 
that and see you can see everything's burning. Yep. Okay, we got a. Uh, it's, it's not rain. It with this this and the whole thing is burning. But this is the tree when I got there in April was green. Mm-hmm. And I, it's a pretty little tree and everything like that. And I come back in October and it's dead and everything else around it's dead and everything else is burning. Oh my gosh! And I'm right sorry. There, and this 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 is all the. This is just just killing the the vegetation because right. the NVAVC couldn't hide. And the, and this this is non-burning. No, uh, picture four. Yeah, and this this is also uh, on a cloudy day, but this just shows you uh, the extent of, of vegetation killing with Agent Orange. Five. Okay. Uh, here again, this is up at the talk. They, they have uh, brought us some hot meals. That was all, always euphemistically something. Uh, but we, we were getting fed down here. They bring it in in mermite cans. But this on the far he- side of it, this is Highway 547 mm-hmm. going out to the Ashaw. And this is down here you had your slick pad and your log pad. Your log pad was over here where the where, – I'm sorry. No, uh, on, on, so on the photo. Uh, uh, on the through. left is where the, the Chinooks came in. On the right was where the slick ships were, the, the carry us go to work mm-hmm. came in. And down at, uh, down there is where I got my hand crushed and uh, along those lines. How would you get your hand crushed? Well, it's uh, May the 3rd of 1968, about 7, 7.30 in the morning. We're going on a combat assault out in the Ashaw or out that way, out toward, uh, out toward the Ashaw. Um, I'm at the slick pad. There's a Chinook that should have gone to the, to the log pad, but apparently communication, misread smoke or whatever, uh, it literally – uh, just stationed itself over where I was. Now, the uh, what size room would you would you call this room? Uh, 25 by 25. Okay. The slick pad was smaller than 25 by 25. I'm off to, let's say, our left. Off to our right was some of the mermite cans from being fed the night before we go on an assault. The down blast, I was bent over trying to keep all of my equipment from blowing away. I had my helmet, my Alice pack, my M5 bag, all this, and my M16 down, bent down, trying to keep everything from blowing away under this Chinook. The uh, uh, Chinook picked up a mermite can on the on the far side over here and flung it like a flat river rock across the, the slick pad and hit me in the back of the head and knocked me out, cold cocked me. When I woke up, my thumb on my right hand was dangling like a piece of meat. My hand was all swollen. And the first thing I thought of, this is my ticket out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going home. We're on the way I'm out. Home. <laughs> well, Major Schwartz, uh, Hildebrand Schwartz, bless his heart, he was the one that cleaned out the uh, embassy uh, in Saigon during Tet and everything like that. He came down, and I said, Major Schwartz, it's been a privilege serving with you, sir. I've been, you know, wounded or hurt. Or not, uh, hurt, not wounded, uh, one way or the other. I need to be uh, vacked. I'll probably go to to Saigon, maybe even to Japan to go home. He said, get on the horn and talk with Charger. So I got on the radio and I... Uh, Who's Charger? Charger is Colonel Beckwith, Charles A. Beckwith, charging Charlie Beckwith. So I got on the horn, the radio, and said, uh, Charger, this is Super Peel. That was my call sign. I've what was your sign call sign? Super Peel. Okay. Okay. I've, I've got my hand crushed. It's been a privilege serving with you, sir. I need to be medevac here. He said, get a cash on it be back tomorrow. I go back again. I said, uh, Charger, you don't understand. It's my right hand. It's crushed. My thumb's dangling. He said, get a cast on it. Be back tomorrow. And so I go back the third time. He overrides me and says, Doc, if you don't have a cast on that and be back tomorrow, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> well, I went back to 22nd Surge, and Joe Sneed, my classmate who did my hemorrhoid surgery months later, put a cast on it, and I was back that afternoon. <laughs> and I got pictures to prove this. And uh, so anyway, that, that thumb right there from a grateful government starting about 10 years ago for my inconvenience is worth $140 and a nickel a month, <laughs> which is tax-free. But I'd really rather have my thumb back, honest <laughs> to God. But right down there at the bottom of that hill was where all that stuff happened. All right. Picture six. Uh, again, Agent Orange in the tree. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, it, it, uh, it didn't get the grass over here, maybe it resisted, but it, it killed all the trees. It's just, yeah. just the whole thing. There. And you can see. Seven? Uh, you've got vegetation there, so uh, I guess that was before Agent Orange brought. <laughs> all uh, right. Okay, or maybe I'm getting whatever. Go ahead. Okay. Eight? Well, you can see how green. Okay, here's my tree. Right, <laughs> right there, my two trees right there. And you see they're green. You can see all a right. Chinook. See that Chinook off in the distance. Yeah. And right down there at the bottom of the hill is where I got it. Gotcha. 
And that line across the top up there is Highway 547, which was two ruts through the jungle. <laughs> there are two guys in McKenzie who either three or four years or two years later were on an engineering uh, a group that helped open up or keep uh, Highway 54. I think they're the Williams brothers or something, but helped keep that open. At the time we were there, you didn't you didn't go any further than Bass Stone with wheel vehicles, and you didn't bring tanks and all that because it was just you know RPGs and everything like that would get you. But here here are the two trees that I mentioned when they were green. When you say Bass Stone, you're talking about a fob. Uh, firebase. Yeah. Yeah, firebase, yeah. He doesn't actually mean Baston. <laughs> <laughs> well, people well, watching might not know. Well, you know, that that the, the, you had LZs, landing yeah. zones, and you had firebases. Firebases had artillery, mm-hmm. and, uh, and LZs had artillery sometimes too, but, you know, a firebase was, you know, a little bit more of a permanent thing at the time, yeah. not that anything was permanent. This just gives you some Picture idea of how, how dry it is, and we're all in holes in the ground when it's dry, and swamps when it's swamps when it's wet. <laughs> Along and here again, Ten. this is before you can see the trees before Agent Orange. Eleven. And, uh, There's before, your tree again. Yeah, right there it is before Agent Orange. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, it, this is all bass stone. Thirteen. Uh, I think you're beginning to see some of the effect here of Agent Orange. Fourteen. Uh, uh, it's just a cloudy day. This is bass stone. <laughs> 15. Bass stone again, Chinooks. Okay, 16. Uh, uh, this this is bass stone. This is on a heli- this is in a helicopter coming in. Uh, when I, I'm reporting to duty in these pictures here. Okay. This is the first time I see bass stone. That's when I'll meet uh, Charger, Charger, and he'll tell me to get a real weapon. Okay. <laughs> 17. Uh, okay, now this is going out on Leech Island. This so is this a- is Assault Leech Island photo one. Okay. Leech Island uh, was in the middle of the jungle. The the river divided it, uh, and it was kind of isolated. It was supposed to uh, have a, some sort of a regimental headquarters or something in there. And with this, uh, you can see... Where's the uh, island? Uh, the island is really going to be, I think, more oh, I o- on that side right there. Uh, we're coming into it. But with this, you had these lizards, these monitor lizards or something. I never saw one, but I was told about them. <laughs> Uh, they are in the river itself, but uh, okay. two. And this this is more on Leech Island. You can see the airstrikes there. Oh, is that what those They're light right, spots are? Yeah, a, that's airstrikes. Oh wow, let's see three. Okay, okay. This is uh, 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 this is uh, okay for for Leech Island. Okay, this is Firebase Brick. Uh, we built this firebase, and. Uh, my aid station was right over there, but this is on Leech Island after okay. we after we got there. Four. Uh, here, here is Firebase Brick on the top, and down here at the bottom left is where we assaulted into. So you're are you strapped into a helicopter when you're taking these photos? No, or Lord, just no, sitting there? I, there, no, we're just sitting there. You had uh, the heli- I was looking. All our helicopters didn't have doors on them. And but there was not. You didn't have a strap on. No, or? no, no. You never. No, no. Uh, uh-uh, no. Airborne and all the way up to hill. <laughs> um, and Beck would like to ride on the, the side of the helicopter with his feet. Excuse me, his feet in the breeze and this sort of thing. And, uh, but uh, no, we we didn't have uh, we didn't have anything. So, uh, we were lucky to have a seat, and that was a web seat. Okay. Five. This this is going to Leech Island. Six. Okay, this this is our landing zone down in here. The brown spots in the, the middle? brown spots, yeah, for okay. Leech Island. All right, seven. Okay, now you can see here they brought in, I'm assuming this is a daisy cutter. Right. Uh, I mean, it's a bigger bomb. They cleaned it up a little bit better. And so we're going to be coming. Uh, you've got your two streams going downstream. Okay, so we're going to be coming in from the left, landing to the right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later here. I think we'll show okay. you here in just a minute. Eight. Okay, that's just me taking a picture Another, of where we're going. <laughs> all right, nine. Okay, this Again, is ten, you're right. Ten. Uh, that's just the countryside. All right, 11. Okay, this is landing. This is a combat assault. This is the first time, supposedly, this was Company C, uh, 2nd 327. Uh, we were air mobile then as opposed to airborne, and this was the first uh, battalion assault, and Charlie Company went in first. Let me stop and you. I was let in me, the third way. Let me stop you real quick. Yeah. So, uh, Air Mobile would become Air Assault, and the Daisy Cutter was dropped prior to you getting there, getting there for a landing zone. Right. 
So daisy cutter, boom. How long between the daisy cutter and you landing? Cause I guess the day before. Okay. Because they didn't do it while we were there before. To my knowledge, I mean, right. it was already blown sure. away before right. we got there. All right. So, okay. So, uh, so you land. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. What you're seeing here is uh, a combat assault. Charlie Company goes in. I'm in the third wave. And uh, Beckwith told me you need 40 body bags. Thank God we didn't use any of them. We were unopposed after we got there. But this, this is the beginning uh, of a combat assault on Leech Island uh, there. And just behind the shrubbery, you guys uh, can see that there's two helicopters back there. If you're not looking close, you might yeah. miss them. And you've got smoke. You've got smoke suppression there, you know, so they don't shoot at us, or suppose we'll it'll, it'll see more of that in just a minute. Right. Okay, you got more smoke. All of this smoke is laid down. And this is just uh, so they can't see to aim at you? That's supposedly the... Uh, okay. Either that or they had extra rounds they need to get rid of. Them. <laughs> but there you see it there. Their helicopters are coming in. That's, that's a great photo. And right here, you notice the, the helicopter doesn't land. You hover at yep. most of this stuff. Yep. And then you unask this thing in a hurry. I mean, yep. they don't tell you... You know, get out, please. They, if you're not moving fast enough, they'll kick you out, and I don't blame them. Yeah. Because they, they are very vulnerable with RPGs or anything else uh, right, with right. something like that. Fifteen. But see, there's no, oh. there's, there, are, there's no. Uh, Back to fourteen. Right. There's no door. Right. There's no door on any of these helicopters. So they old, came with doors. They just took them off. Took them off when it was all, and every time we went riding. Uh, <laughs> whatever right now the other interesting thing is when we got in country everybody wanted to get an air medal so you would get all your little time and place this that and the other and then after you've been there a while everybody forgot the air medals i guess except people in the rear because the people flying these things deserve the air medals we didn't we were just passengers gotcha one another. 15 uh, and then they're coming in these are amazing you got photos. three helicopters yeah there. i see them that, is, um, that, that that's an amazing photo Absolutely amazing. 16. Okay, we're on ground running. So the choppers are gone. You're hauling ass. Yeah, we well, it looks like you're in the back. Well, I, I'm <laughs> off to the side. <laughs> All right. Here's 17. another one. This is a beautiful one. you got the, the first sergeant calling them in uh, there, and you got uh, six six or five birds there. Yep. Five. Uh, you got five birds. 18. Okay. And he's, you know, telling you where to go, get the, get off the helicopter, you move your ass, you right. get my French. That's right. 19. And uh, here's what we were moving our ass into. Here's your wait a minute bushes, your elephant yep. ga- uh, grass and all this other sort of if you, thing. If you guys looking at these blades of grass here. They'll cut uh, you. They're like razor blades. Uh, and you'll just walk through them. And, and sometimes they're so sharp you don't even really feel it. And then you've got five or six cuts on your arms and things like that. They'll cut you. Crazy. Uh, 20. Okay, here we're you got your RTO there, uh, and here again is a okay. What's the RTO? Uh, radio ter- transmission operator, the radio man, mm-hmm. and you can see, among other things, he's got smoke too mm-hmm. there uh, on his shoulder. On his yeah. shoulder, yeah. But uh, his main thing was carrying the radio. Okay, twenty-one, and here they're coming in. You know, five yeah. birds. Yeah, it's impressive. Twenty-two, and one. The interesting thing about this, this one didn't blow up. A lot of them I learned later on that uh, in summer of 68, according to one guy, the specifications for fuel tanks on Hueys changed so that they didn't become Molotov cocktails when they hit the ground. So did you watch that crash? Yeah. Why didn't you get any pictures of it crashing? Well, <laughs> it came in pretty hard. <laughs> Was anybody uh, hurt? Uh, you know, honest God, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think okay. it was more inconvenience. I don't remember a medevac. I mean, it looks mostly intact, but right. if guys aren't built yeah. it in, you don't know who. One way or the other. No, we, so you know, the crew is checking it over and this sort of thing there. Let's picture uh, twenty three. It's uh, mangled pretty good. Yeah, you good. They'd take it out, pull it out. Twenty four. Here, here we are. We're we're going up the hill. We got to go climb a hill now and fix that fire base. So, uh, am I doing right by? Yeah. No, that's. Perfect. Okay, so you just cut this out. <laughs> uh, 25. Okay, this is just a picture of, I think it's probably the Songbo River uh, that went on into around Way. It wasn't the Perfume River, it was Song- Songbo, and it would have been up around LZ Sally uh, where it would have come in. All right. And 26. here we are uh, in the jungle. and uh, That's jungle. That's jungle, brother. And uh, you know you just you just couldn't see anything as far as uh, trip wires, uh, punji stakes, anything they set up. 
uh, if you know if, if if there was a path, it would better not to take that path. Right. You know, let somebody uh, cut another way. But all of this just gives you some idea of the intensity. Yeah. Twenty seven. Okay. Here's it bringing in the bulldozer mm-hmm. to to fix us up some uh, bunkers and everything like that. All right. Twenty eight. Uh, same. Same. Thing. Same. Twenty nine. Thirty. Uh, here's where we're in the jungle. This is more just brush under brush. We're not really in the, the triple canopy or with big tall trees. This is more um, what you find around the house type mm-hmm. maple trees and that sort of thing. But it wasn't those real big tall trees mm-hmm. uh, there. But here again, it was pretty close and tight. 31, same. Yeah. yeah. 32. Right. 33. Yeah, and here again, all this, all this vegetation will get you. <laughs> 34. Uh, same. 35. Okay, here's here's uh, the door gunner with his M60. He had uh, M60s on both sides. And door gunner, you know, and crew chief. And uh, uh, that's that's what they did. 36. And here's where we camped out. <laughs> <laughs> where you went camping? Where we went camping. 37. Okay. They, they're bringing us water. And uh, we pop yellow smoke. And uh, you can see some of them are taking off their, their tops, which we you get malaria like that. But anyway... They're bringing in in uh, plastic containers of water here, and uh, I, you didn't drink much water. I got kidney, uh, one kidney stone on the left side in about oh, July or August. Uh, I thought they were going to have to hold the war without me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we had come in on a stand down, and it hit me on the left side. I'd gone upstairs. I'd gone up to use the bathroom, and it hit me. And so they took me over to 326 uh, Medical Clearing Company. Uh, they checked my urine. I was bleeding. They gave me an IV, two shots of morphine, put me on a stretcher on the ground in a GP medium and came back the next morning, I guess, because the morphine took effect. And little Charlie went back to work. <laughs> no, 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 no fan, but no nothing. Uh, oh, gosh. It, you know, if you, if you breathe, breathe and walk, you go back to work. You go back to work. So, um, picture 38, what are we seeing? Is that the water below the helicopter? Well, yeah, they're bringing us in water. He's hovering. Uh, and you, you have uh, uh, so, some of the, the red bag there may be mail. We lived for mail. Yeah. Mail to get out, mail to get. And you, if you didn't get mail, you know, you really hurt. But mm-hmm. the red bag may have been mail or it may have been secrets for, right. the, for gotcha. the, the company commander gotcha. and the battalion commander. I don't know. But, 39. Uh, and, the red uh, bags are very visible there. Yeah, right. It's some sort of. Right. Uh, supplies or something. Uh, 40. Uh, Same. Yeah. 41. And, uh, or that the water may have been in there. I may, I may be wrong on this, but, uh, oh, anyway, you can find it. but the <laughs> water, the water at that time was important. They're we bringing stuff. Yeah, they're bringing stuff. <laughs> they are bringing stuff. 42. Now, over here to your far left is, is Colonel Beckwith. The guy with the shirt off? Yeah, who, uh, Bersani did not like that. But here is Charlie Beckwith in his element. So on the far, uh, far, far left, left of the is picture. Charlie Beckwith, <laughs> charging Charlie. 43? Uh, we just, it's, we're in the jungle. <laughs> 44, and that here, red bag. Maybe red bag, but probably water. 45. Uh, let's see, we hope it's water or Same whatever. Same guy, yeah. 46. And uh, here's water. They're getting the re- the red bag. Yeah, the red bag. So right here, it's water. I, I, it's all right. That's fine. But so, you can't see through it. Okay, so... Uh, it looks like tea. So they bring you sweet tea out there was in the jungle? Was that tea or pea? Which, they, which, tea. Which they, tea. Bring you, they bring you tea out it there? It tasted like pea, I'll tell you. <laughs> it was so chlorinated, you really didn't need a dental hygienist. It would just bleep. No, I'm just, it, it, it was it was like drinking Purex. Oh, gosh. And so a lot of people didn't didn't drink a lot of water, and so we had all sorts of problems there. Uh, but, yeah. But there it is. There it is. And Looking we, like. You had two canteens on your Alice pack, two canteens on your LBE, load-bearing equipment. And uh, that was it, and that's what you drank, and uh, that's the reason you had medical problems. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. here we are. I'll just kind of tick through, yeah. and if you need to stop, we'll no, stop. No, just, just keep on going. And, and so he, uh, here's here's where we went camping. Fifty one. Fifty two. Just out of a helicopter. Fifty three. I mean, it was it was beautiful country. Yeah, fifty four. Uh, here again, more of the jungle. <laughs> 55. Uh, and here again, we get water. This is all Leech Island. 56. Yeah. And they're we're packing up. I assume that strap is right in 16. 57. More of the jungle. I mean, you just, <laughs> 58. I, in, in this stuff, I mean, you, you didn't have these uh, battle line uh, 
engagements. Right. You you had just ambushes, yours and theirs. Right. Uh, you had short-term skirmishes and all this sort of thing, but you did not have the... Uh, every once in a while you'd run into maybe bunkers that offered resistance, and then, of course, everything except B-52s would come in. And that's wrong bringing a B-52 if you need to get the bunker out <laughs> so nobody on our side got hurt. But uh, that's just what... It was all very personal, uh, you know... You had the, in, in these things, you would have the point man many times carrying a 12 gauge pump. Mm -hmm. You had a slack man who would be carrying an M16. And those were the two who would make their way through the jungle, hopefully not tripping a, a, a booby trap or stepping in a punji stake or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that's, it was just up close and personal. Mm -hmm. 59. More of the elephant. Wait a minute. Sixty. Just, that's, as I say, that's Sixty-one. Eat you alive, and that's just. Sixty-two. And, and this was our MSC officer. Bless his heart. What is MSC? A military specialty uh, officer. He was the one that kept the rear. Uh, he was a nice guy, uh, and uh, okay. he was transferred elsewhere. Let's see. Now uh, we're in okay. Bastogne. Picture we're, we're one. In, we're Bastogne. You can see everything is burning. And here is this. You guys uh, at the mess hall. Uh, uh, yes, our uh, our. Uh, looks like Burbank. a pop up. Looks like a pop up tent. Well, it was something like that, basically. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, to make a long story short, one of those may have had ice cream in it, and the higher <laughs> officials, not Beckwith, because the higher than him, was so proud that they were bringing us ice cream, which was kind of a either a white or a brown putty liquid stuff that we'd pour out and not eat. <laughs> but um, they would bring steakoids and stuff like that, mashed potatoes that, you know, okay. I don't even think the rat, well, I'm not going to get it. But it was, <laughs> this was this was being fed a meal gotcha. before you we were supposed to go out and do stuff. Okay, passed on two. Okay. Now this, uh, okay, here is the first uh, structure you're seeing there is the talk. You mean and, at, the, at the top of the crest? No, no the oh, first sorry. right here. Okay. Now, with somebody towards walking the, like that, that has the got the to be a high-ranking officer because, number one, he's clean. Number <laughs> two, he has his sleeves rolled up. And number three, he's charging up the hill. I don't think this was Beckwith. Beckwith they would not have walked like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, the first thing is, is the talk. Then up above there is your commo thing. You can see all the aerials. The military uh, crest, and, right? One right, right, the military crest is all the aerials and everything like that. But that had to, that may have been, um, oh God, who? Well, I don't. It, it was some that, some that guy, is, some ranking. Guy. <laughs> all right, this was Three. not just a troop. Okay, now you can see uh, these are our various bunkers with sandbags. We you know filled all the sandbags and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Some of it you can see the. Uh, Ammo uh, uh, crates, crates uh, from Milan, uh, Milan Army Ammunition Factory. <laughs> and uh, the problem is all these things were good when it was dry, but all these things would cave in when they were wet. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so here again, that, Four, that's the way it was. Yeah. This is Bastogne. Five. Bastogne. Six. Bastogne. Seven. Okay, here's my aid station. Pretty fancy digs. Oh, God, I'll tell you what. It, 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 the talk above it and the combo up there. But the problem is when it rained, all of that stuff came down through here. You can see some furniture that we made uh, from the uh, Milan uh, Arsenal stuff. The bridge right here, mm -hmm. all of that are, are ammo boxes from Milan Army <laughs> uh, base. And you can see some of the other things they tried to, you know, every little bit of home you could have there to include the little sidewalks and the little perimeter. You can see the ammo boxes there walk going up the hill uh -huh. as yeah. a little uh, yeah. nice. stairway. So, so, you, so you've got your aid cross there. Yeah. That's in Southeast Asia. Correct. In Southwest Asia, they don't look like that. You, you think that that cross is universal, but in, in Southwest Asia, it's, it's the crescent. crescent. Okay, the red crescent. Yeah, yeah okay. and so, right. like, it, so the first time I saw them, I'm like, what is that? Because it looks like an aid box, white, yeah. red. Yeah. Uh, like, so, so just a cultural thing for me, uh, reset, you know, seeing right. the different type of aid sign. You know. Well, the, the, the one thing, though, about a red cross and everything like that, our medics didn't wear a red cross band on their shoulder. And I know several other people who have, in my experience, never heard them talk, uh, ran around in Southwest Asia in either APCs or other vehicles with red crosses on. To me, those were RPG bait. Yeah, right. I mean, we, uh, you didn't salute. 
uh, you know, you didn't look pretty or anything like that. Right. But you, uh, this this was for the local people know where to go. Yeah. And right up there, you can see no slack. <laughs> Is that what it right, says? Right, no slack right there. <laughs> Second three two seven. Uh, uh, all right. No slack, but you know, always right. no slack. Eight. Uh, here's just a picture. Here's your 106 recoilless rifle. I don't think it was ever used. Uh, that yeah, because they are not recoilless. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they called them that. Here's triple concertina uh, uh, roll right. right in front of you. There. Nine. And th this would have the red cross on on an aid station. You can see from the top, but uh, oh, gotcha. Thank God the other side didn't see it. <laughs> Ten. Uh, here is I think Agent Orange is hit here. Here's just another. This is at Bastone. All right. Eleven. And uh, this is some burning. This is Bastone also. Twelve. And it gives you some idea of the dust. And uh, you you didn't uh, you just stayed dirty all the time. I mean you yeah. just. Uh, I would get back to the rear every five to six days to clean up back there, and we had these uh, little canvas uh, buckets that you would get a jerry can full of water and clean most of the stuff off and then try to get a, a clean uniform. And uh, and the other the guys out in there didn't get, you know, that uh, that much fun. If you had a stream nearby, as I say, you could get in there and do that, but you had the leeches, which could be impressive at times. You're right. And uh, so I don't know. Uh, but and it rained. When it rained, you just kind of got out and washed off. But you you didn't get the eleven Bravos. But I just they didn't get many baths. You know, worth were worthwhile as far as <laughs> right. Or showers. In. Thirteen. Okay, this is my aid station, and you see Sergeant Mezzo over there. Sergeant uh, uh, the um, right there, the second guy on the left. He was a good guy. Uh, two tours in Vietnam. Uh, he left soon after I got there. And uh, uh, he was he was an excellent guy. The replacements for him uh, over a series of, of medical platoon sergeants were nowhere near the caliber that man was. Uh, this the guy bent down there is Art DeWolf Buddha, and he's the one who brought my uh, aid book back. Oh. <laughs> the tall guy right here mm -hmm. uh, is a guy named uh, Edward. And uh, when they dumped the ordnance on our Delta Company, it blew him all to pieces, and we found his head and sent that home. But that was that was Edward. But all the rest of them are just just people in our medical. Art That's DeWolf cool. was was a character. He uh, he was just a character. He he uh, was 91C, and he didn't he didn't go to jump school. He didn't need to, or I didn't think he needed to. But anyway. We had him, and he took care of us in the rear. Nice. And, and the fire bases. Nice. Go ahead. 14. Same guys. Uh, here, this is my medical platoon. We're all getting assignments and everything like that. And uh, you say just everybody is just where they're going to go. And, and, and an impressive set of stairs mm -hmm. made from the artillery, artillery boxes. boxes. <laughs> well, right there. Right. <laughs> West Tennessee. Here, here right. we are. There 15. We are. Okay, uh, this is out in, uh, oh, Lord, uh, uh, in the, somewhere. Uh, I think this is when I'm fixing to go on R&R, &R, uh, or, or I'm leaving on R&R. &R, but uh, anyway, they're, they're in the middle of nowhere out there, and mm -hmm. I was with them. All right, 16. Okay, this is still Bastone, and you can see all the bags. are. I slept on the roof at night. Why? Because I didn't want to be in there. I mean, I, I just didn't like the idea of that thing caving in on me. Gotcha. And, hit. and then I'd lay on the outside when we would get. We really didn't get hit that much. It was in other places. It only takes one yeah, stop. I know it. But anyway, <laughs> I slept on the roof. Hey, see, like, you want to act like I'm a grain of sand and all that. You said we didn't get hit much. Right. Like, you, what you said is they didn't drop bombs on us all the yeah, time. No. But they sure <laughs> kept your anal sphincter. Dry. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty oh hard. Gosh. 17. Okay. Now here, okay, this, okay, here is sanitation at its best, okay. Uh, the, the, may I use the word sh crapper or shitter? Which one? Oh, shitter's fine. Oh, shitter, okay. Right the, in the shitter center. on the bottom is for all of us. The one enclosed is, of course, for the officers. The, 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 no, for uh, for Beckwith, bless his heart. Oh, okay. He had his own private pooper. Well, and, why would you uh, not? I, he in, is entitled to it. <laughs> he is entitled to it. <laughs> All right. And then 18? Okay. This is Bastone again. Okay. Uh, 19? Uh, there's yours truly uh, back in the day. That's you? That's me. Wow. Look at you. you look at me right. One way that other. You can see I've, I've got my... Uh, my uh, a camera, camera over there. And, and, your, and your thumb is on your hand. Right. One way or the other. 
<laughs> and I think this was maybe before I got my hand crossed. Well, it looks like it. It yeah, looks like your hands. Other, along right. those lines, they were not a safe place. And then 20? A bath stone yeah. and, and all that. 21? Other. Yeah, same thing. Eight, eight stations. <laughs> 22. Okay, this is after it rained, and my side of the aid station caved in with all my personal effects, <laughs> except my camera. I got out in time. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. It, it oh, my gosh. In. Oh, my gosh. And, 23? Uh, right there's white Before it caved in, that's what it looked like. And uh, each one of these sandbags now has, you know, a lot of work. It, I mean, we didn't have the Laterite girls. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means. Okay. Back in the rear, <laughs> back in the rear. Uh, you had the, the local uh, females, the local Vietnamese female, females, who would fill sandbags. Oh, okay. Okay. And offer uh, creature comforts, too, sometimes which require an awful lot of penicillin. Right. But anyway, they would fill sandbags in the rear. Out where we were, everybody, to include yours truly and Colonel Beckwith, filled sandbags. And um, so, anyway. You told me Bick with uh, yeah, filled, yep, filled sandbags. That, that, and he, one bunker I was involved in had 26 years of college education. <laughs> <laughs> that was incentive to dig a deep hole. Okay. <laughs> All, All right, right, 24. Oh, that's just the creature comfort. All right. And here's water, the jerry cans with water right there. All right, All right. And, and all that sort 25. of 25. And here again is the That bridge. magnificent bridge. Yeah. 26. Uh, same Bastone. All right. 27. Bastone. 28. Bastone. 29. Bastone. 30. Bastone. I think you see Agent oh. Orange. Oh, oh sorry. Before. Well, just Agent Orange has got us there right. somewhat. It's taken 31. Effect. And here again, Bastone. 32. Uh, beginning of, of Agent Orange at Bastone. 33. Uh, here's, this is, we've come back. Oh, my gosh. We've come back to paradise. <laughs> oh, can you believe this? While we were gone. They rebuilt the aid station. They rebuilt the aid station. And it looks fantastic. It did, man. I, I'm, I, You know, one way or the other. Is that concrete? Uh, no, no. That's that's all probably uh, PSP. I don't know what that uh, is. Well, a perforated steel platform. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. or some, anyway, it's, it's real live wood, and they fill the sandbags and everything. But this, we, see, we had gone out to the ash hall, and then we were coming back. We... We firebase or uh, hopped. We, I started at Bastone, went to Vagel, went to Sone, went to Birch's Garden, which is on the side, on the east side of the Ashaw Valley. Then we come back from Birch's Garden to Sone, and we're there for the monsoon. Then we come to Vagel for a very short period of time because it got worse and worse. And then we came to Bastone. And w w when we got off the helicopter and saw this, man, I couldn't believe this. I mean, this was five star. Uh, how, how long since you'd been there? Oh, Lord, three or four months. Okay, so. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, it was. It was very nice. I mean, you know. <laughs> All right, and, uh, 34. Uh, and here is when Bastone, before Agent Orange, you can see some of the, All right. the tall the 35. Trees. And right here is Bastone. 36. And here is Bastone. 37. Bastone. 38. Bastone. 39. Bastone. Bastone. 40. 41. Okay, now here we are. We're out somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and... Of course, we had to be shaven and had high-walled haircuts. We didn't get that much out where we were, but you had to keep clean and uh, as best you could. And so, you know, they had the little sundry packs with the razor blades and the, mm -hmm. the uh, shaving cream and all that sort of thing. All right. 42? Uh, this is out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> 43? Uh, this is Bastone. 44? Still Bastone. <laughs> 45? Uh, no slack. Okay, uh, now this is probably uh, out at uh, Birch's Garden. No, it says Bastogne. Oh, it does say Bastogne, okay. Then the, the the fog had come in or whatever. I, I'm discombobulated. If it oh, it's, well, it's a close-up of a sign. Yeah, you're, you're, no the harm, no foul there. But the, the, the snow, I'm not snow, but the, the smoke right. and uh, there. That's all right. Go ahead. 46. Oh, yeah, still Bastogne, right? I know, because you yeah. label all these pictures. I'm, okay. I can see the label. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. 47. Uh, okay, Bastogne. 48. And that's, you know, the weird thing, you had to accommodate, you, in some of these places, particularly out in the, uh, out like at, uh, at Birch's Garden and up at Eagle's Nest, you would get socked in like this right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Many times when you got socked in like this, there, from what I understand, and I'm not a combo expert, all of a sudden you'd start getting cut 
with their radioactivity mm -hmm. because they knew that we couldn't call in airstrikes and all that other sort of thing. Oh, I see. And so you would start, they would, you know, they, they like to communicate apparently from what I was, was informed or whatever in, in weather like that right there. Oh, okay. So all right. You would have that. 49. Best of 50. Oh, my, okay. Here is uh, Omar Barsani. And here is, um, oh God, what was his name? Uh, he came out. He was in charge of everything. Uh, not, not Wayne. Okay, who, who was he? Uh, anyway, he's four-star general, and uh, he came out to visit us along with Barsani, who was two stars. Well, those stars are bright on the four-star. Right, right, very right. much <laughs> so. Subdued on Barsani. Who? Uh, who? Uh, uh, Anyway, he was in charge of everything. He came out and, you know, boosted the morale and then went back to wherever and <laughs> people go. 51? Uh, here was uh, uh, the bunker that caved in. Uh, gotcha. One way the other. And we were trying to cook and eat and everything like that. 52? Still Bastogne. 53? Uh, that's him coming across. You can see all the stars. I can't remember what General's name. <laughs> it's so bright. I'm not repressing it, but he was in charge of everything. <laughs> right. 54? Uh, and that is Highway 547 going out to Ashaw. 55? Uh, that is us saluting as the uh, everybody comes in. That, that's the general, the four-star. Gotcha. And then now we're at uh, Brick. Uh, okay, this is Brick. This is Leech Island. Brick is the fire base we built up there. Uh, okay, this is photo one and Brick. Two? We're heading to Brick. Three? That was, that was just a, a jungle-encrusted hill, and we cleaned it up. Four? And, uh, here again, out in the middle of nowhere. Now, that's heading out for, that's going to the Ashaw. Okay, uh, the, five? Five? Uh, but uh, there was a guy who had the um, barber shop and the equipment shop uh, directly across from Gate One at Fort Campbell, and so, uh, named Brick or something that we understand. And so they named the fire base after the men who owned the facility uh, directly across from Campbell. Uh, and the interesting thing about all this is when we came back from Fort Sam Houston, it was a, a military secret that the Second Brigade was going to Vietnam. And we weren't supposed to tell anybody to include wives and families and everything like that. Well, all you needed to do was to go to get your laundry there at gate one or get your insignia put on your uniform at gate one or get your shoes. And they knew we oh, were yeah. going. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they knew we were going. Oh, yeah. So, so much for military secrets. Well, I mean, it's like uh, when uh, after 9-11 when the 101st deployed, and uh, you, you, could, you couldn't buy a grenade pouch in 500 miles of Campbell, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Picked it clean. Like, it's, it's pretty easy to figure it I out. This yeah. is out, out, yeah. out toward the ash hole. Six. Just out toward the ash Seven. Hole. And that's, that's, as I say, that's just a jungle Eight. We, we lived in. Nine. And, and just out toward the ash hole. The, Ten. You know, and uh, this is on the top of the hill there at Brick. Mm -hmm. Eleven. And... Uh, Daisy cutter damage? Well, no, uh, this is high-low. Okay, what they would do, your engineers would come in and high-low C4 plastic explosive. You can see how they blew these trees apart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they knew what they were doing, thank God. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, that, that's. Why, why did they do that? So we could come in. Okay. And land. This, this would have been a, a many times an expedient uh, yep. landing area. Uh, but this would have been brick, so we could get in on the top of the hill up there. Gotcha. But you can see how these trunks are splintered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but just high low. Gotcha. High low the things, and that's a big tree. Uh, this is still building brick. Thirteen. And this was uh, this was dug by hand, boys and girls in Radio Woo. Land, uh, to include me. I mean, uh, here's your here's your pickaxe, and here's your shovels. And, well, at least it wasn't the little bitty <laughs> no, e tool. But, no, <laughs> but th that I mean, here again, everything we dug out, we put in a bag. Well, excuse me. Yeah. We put in a bag, and no, there was no bulldozer on this one. Oh gosh. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, and here again, this is at brick. Fifteen. And brick. Sixteen. Oh, uh, this is this is brick. Seventeen. Now the interesting thing, uh, a story to be told, is that. It got around uh, the brigade and everything like that that I was interested in dermatology. So we were at Brick, and matter of fact, digging that hole in the ground. And one of my aid men come down and says, Doc, there's a full bull up there that wants to see you. And a full bull is bird kernel. And I thought, what have I done now? Because I was kind of yeah, right. got some trouble and everything like that. So I go <laughs> up there and I saluted and uh, came here and, and the, the gentleman, uh, the colonel, 
said, uh, I understand you're a dermatologist. I said, no, sir, I'm not. When I when I go back, you know, to the continental United States, I, I want to study and be a dermatologist. He said, well, I want you to look at some things. So we went off the side for privacy, and he took his uh, top off, your blouse or whatever, or whatever. And at that time, the terminology in dermatology was if you had a red spot, it was a senile angioma. If you had a brown spot, it was a senile Mentago, and if you had a scaly red, uh, or brown, it was a senile keratosis. Well, sir, you have a senile angioma, you have a senile keratosis, you have a senile lentigo. He very quickly stood me to attention and readily assured me that there was nothing about him senile, <laughs> and that if I didn't change my nomenclature, I was going to get the benefit of a one-way trip to Hanoi without a parachute. <laughs> Everything is essential or actinic <laughs> or whatever, but there was nothing... Nothing senile about that full bull colonel. Wherever he is, I hope he's doing well and you have a good dermatologist. <laughs> but so much for, All right. for whatever. And this oh, is uh, Captain Heron, that's photo Captain, one. Oh, God. If that's not Cherry and FNG, I don't know. I mean, look, that hurts to look at. I mean, <laughs> really. really. That, look You're so how, clean. Oh, that's it. Look how pretty all that. And here is my 66 Ford Mustang. All right. And here's Heidi, our German shepherd. Oh, gosh. And those, my my, tra- my 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 pants legs were bloused correctly. Let me tell you a story on that one. Okay, I, c- I come back from Fort Sam Houston. Okay, I'm supposed to report to the full bull colonel in charge of the second brigade. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I don't remember his name, but he was a nice man. Anyway, I go into his office and A. B. Cannon, uh, Command Sergeant Major A. B. Cannon, who has more battle stars than Milky Way, was there. And uh, so I said, uh, Sergeant Major uh, Cannon, I'm Captain here, and I'm supposed to report to the colonel. He looks up me you know, up and looks, kind of goes like this. He said, come here, Captain, come here. He takes me around to the side, and he straightens me up, gets me strike, blouses my trousers for me, and says, okay, Captain, you can go see the colonel now. So I don't know where A.B. is, but uh, <laughs> he was quite a character. He was quite a character. He helped uh-huh. you out there, huh? He did. Two? Some more of the same? More of the same. Pitiful God. I even have my scissors. I'm ready to cut stuff up. You're ready for hero oh, oh, duty okay. right I, there. I, I, I tell you one way. <laughs> okay, now here Three. we are. Now, this is uh, uh, December the 12th of 1967. Uh, the guy with me is Gary Munoz. He was my driver. Uh, see, as an officer, I was not permitted to touch a Jeep. Or I could sit in it, but I couldn't do anything else. So he was my driver, and Gary was a guy, nice guy. I don't know where Gary is. But he and I went over together, and we were all getting ready to get on uh, C-141s. Uh, this is uh, Eagle Thrust out there, what outlaw feel at uh, Fort Campbell and go to Vietnam. And God knows, I mean, I'm just, we're just all ready. <laughs> Somewhat. All right, now, four. here is after I got there, okay? This is in the middle of Tet. Uh, this is up at LZ Jane. And it rained every day and night for 28 days and night. And I felt guilty because I had that rain jacket top and the troops didn't. But after a while, it didn't make any difference anyway because you stayed wet all yeah, along. Yeah, was wet. Now, under there, I have my flat jacket. Not that I'm afraid of getting killed by shrapnel. It was something to keep you warm. Yeah, right. You know, at, at, after that, we didn't wear flat jackets. I mean, you know, you right. didn't out where we were. But at that time, it was so cold and wet and rainy, and I was so miserable. Yeah. And uh, Five. Uh, here I am. Okay, what is, this is probably... Oh, Lord, the Bastogne, probably. Well, I see the yellow sign. It may well have been Bastogne again. Uh, now, this is LZ Six. Jane. This is LZ Jane. I'm writing a letter home. Uh, I've got my trusty 45 there. I like it. Well, that well, piece of shit. Uh, is, it was that piece of shit. As, as, I'm uh, writing home. Beckwith what, called it. Where, where are we going? And we're in the middle of Tet. And I, at this time, see, I, was, I went over as brigade surgeon. That was a major slot, and I was a captain. Well, um, uh, Hank Bell had to go home. Uh, he was uh, uh, a battalion surgeon. I think this was the 2nd to 501st. He had to go home because of family problems and everything like that. So for one month, I covered him, his place, while he was back in the United States. So uh, I, I, that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be a battalion surgeon, not a brigade surgeon. Right. And so I'm writing home. And we're in a bunker that we, I mean, a, a, well, kind of a bunker away thing that we dug. And um, so that's, that's Charlie right now. Gotcha. Home. Seven. Uh, this was probably uh, 
at uh, at Jane also uh, here again with the Jeep. We slept in the Jeep sometime. You can see you've got the uh, uh, protection Listen, these, thing. these pictures that are labeled Captain Heron, we want to hear about Captain Heron. Okay. We don't want to hear about the what Jeep. base you're at or let's just – Particularly, okay. like, what's okay. what's what's Captain Heron doing in this picture? Captain Heron is is uh, it's in the middle of the tent. You can see the uniform is still clean. Oh God, it's despicably clean. Like a, I'm ashamed. But like a but like a a rotting cherry <laughs> at this point. One, one way or the other, <laughs> I'm ashamed of being that clean. <laughs> All right. Okay. Eight. Uh, now this is back. Okay, this is back at Bastone. Yeah. Uh, this is the 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 new thing there. That that fancy place. Right. And. Uh, I don't. It, that's a smoke grenade yeah. as opposed to anything else. And they, of course, we have a good haircut. And, uh, <laughs> All right. That's that's where we are. All right. And, Nine. And, okay. Now this is um, Terry Spiedelberg. Terry Spiedelberg was uh, headquarters headquarters company commander, getting us over to Vietnam. Uh, Terry was a Mustang. He was an NCO before he uh, went to uh, uh, Benning School for Boys. <laughs> and, uh, and then he became, worked his way up. He's a captain here, later, later on become a major. And th this is uh, downtown Coochie mm -hmm. uh, before Tet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, that's Terry and, uh, or, or that, is that Terry or me? No, that's. That's, that's you, Doc. That's me. Okay, well, I'm squinted. I thought I'm, I'm wrong. Okay, well, <laughs> let me get a trifocal then. Okay, I'm downtown Coochie. Uh, it, it's not Terry. Terry and I looked a lot alike. Under these circumstances, with the squinting, but if that's me, that's you. Uh, that's you, and I'm still very cheery. All right, uh, ten. Okay, uh, this is pro okay. This is out at. Um, I don't care. Let's hear about the aid bag at least. Okay, uh, what's in it? What's in it? Well, you had two bottles, uh, two glass bottles of IV fluid. Uh, you had penicillin PNG tablets. You had tetracycline tablets, sulfur tablets. Uh, you had band aids. Um, you had some wire splints, a lot of gauze and other bandages and everything like that. Uh, you had some, uh, I really didn't carry the uh, uh, morphine uh, searing gets. The people in, you know, out getting out in the field carried them more than mm -hmm. I needed because they needed them immediately. Right, right. And so this was M5 bag. This is what we had. This was my hospital and uh, everything like that right there. All right, 11. Uh, this, uh, again, is uh, at LZ Jane. I'm cold. I'm miserable. I want to go home. What, what is the outfit? Why is it? Is it just a coloration thing? Is it Well, it's my, okay, this is my uh, rain gear. Okay. Okay. Uh, my top is, is, that's it. I don't think I had pants. I think we just wet. Gotcha. Just wet. Gotcha. 12? Yeah, here again, right. just, just miserable. 13? And here again, you had the top, and yeah. we're, uh, it's in the middle of Tet. Mm -hmm. and 14 back, uh, back at Bastion all right 15 okay right here we are digging in at Chondon C-H-O-N-T-H-O-T-H-A-N it actually looks like you're posing with the pickaxe I am posing with a pickaxe <laughs> now, this is a progression this is a progression uh, okay all right. okay now this is probably our second or third bunker uh, we are digging in and filling sandbags you can see them over there and as time goes on you dig deeper with more vigor and intensity. I really had not been hit at this age and stage. This will come later, mm -hmm. and uh, you will have much more depth. Right. And De more, deeper. More, <laughs> deeper. <laughs> deeper and faster. Overhead cover, brother. Overhead 16. Cover. Uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, I'm at uh, Jane. This is a, a, a letter, a, a Valentine from uh, from Nancy, and uh, uh Anyway, uh, we're we're there, and I'm staying with the chaplain in his bunker there. All right, okay. seventeen. Uh, this, here's another same place, and uh, uh, that, that sort of thing. Okay, just uh, we we all going crazy. Eighteen. Uh, uh, here again, this is the all same right. thing. Got got an right. aid, aid thing from a, a care package from right. home. We'd eat the popcorn. Oh, I'm this 19. was wonderful. Okay, we got a care package. Now here we have shrimp, uh, canned shrimp, and yeah. some tomato soup. Uh -huh. And we're going to make a creation here in a minute that, that stayed down, I think. It was not too rational. All right, 20. Okay. This is, oh, new in country. This is at Benoit. This is so cheer. Glass, look at look at the dark glasses yeah. on these people. Army, That's you. Oh, but what else do we have? We have our wristwatch. Our Army issue wristwatches. 
<laughs> and I think we also have our gas mask bags. Yeah, that's what uh, it looks like. Uh, one way or the other. But glasses, our flag jackets, and this is Coochie and everything. Uh, not Coochie, but taste, um, Benoit. Benoit. And so we've got our gas mask, our washes. And, oh, I can't, and, oh, God, that hurts. All right, 21. <laughs> okay, we're getting in country. This you, is up Chanton. Uh, now, you got, got your Thompson. finger on the trigger. Doc. I know. And I, well, I'm young. <laughs> I haven't seen any of your, your courses or anything like that. But we're at Chanton. We're dirty. <laughs> and, uh, we haven't gone up to uh, Fubai yet. All right, 22. Okay. Uh, this is at LZ El Paso that became Camp Eagle. Okay, but later. what's going on with, with, with Captain Heron in these in these photos? Well, this is the bunker that had 26 years of college education oh, gotcha. in it. All right, See, right there, that's, that's what Which we, we had to take apart uh, the night or day uh, before Tet. And we we got torn up. See this valley? Yeah. This is where I lost my cherry. This was where we were pinned down mm -hmm. with 80, I don't know whether they were 60 millimeter mortars or 82 millimeter mortars. It mortar. doesn't really matter, does it? No, it doesn't. One way or the other. They started at the top, came down, came down, went back and, and everything like that. Where we were supposed to be, four people were killed. Uh, a uh, MSC officer, uh, Captain Jim, and I got up and ran. We lay in a deuce and a half rut. He on one side, I on the other like this, and we got bracketed. The mortars hit over there and pulled us up and got hit. When the mortars went off on his side, he reflexed. I don't think he did it on purpose. I think he just reflexed. Got his hand up and got shrapnel, and he got a medevac. If I'd known, I'd probably put him <laughs> I, did, I wasn't very wise, but this this is before Tet and gotcha. what came, became Camp Eagle. All right, 23. Okay. Uh, we are on a little local thing there. Um, and the what, thing, what do you mean local thing? Like okay. arts of mind thing? Well, well, this is just, at this time we were at Coochie, I think. And we were just, we were obcon at that time to the 25th Infantry Division, Tropical Lightning. And we would go out on patrols and all this other sort of thing, trying to get used to stuff. And so I'm out with them. I, you know, you've got all the mess you don't need. This little boy with all intents and purposes can get you killed because he can run back and tell mama son who's mm -hmm. doing what and where. Right. And you can see my I'm still very cherry in that how well my my trousers yeah. are loused in my pants. Right. I've still got the, the good I've lost the watch somewhere. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't rate it for anything immoral. It's twenty four. <laughs> anyway, but I'm still very oh, cherry. Oh, okay. Oh, twenty three. Oh, back to twenty three. Back to twenty three. I'm still extremely cherry. And we're doing sea rations right, All right. now. Right. If I'm going too fast, just tell me no, not. Not the least bit. Okay. Twenty four. Now this is for those who don't know. This is local sanitation in the rear. Now, you can see uh, four jet fuel tank things, okay? That's, they put water in that, it'd warm up, and then you'd take a shower over there. Well, all of the things that are on fire here are 55-gallon drums that were cut in half and that everybody would poop in, okay? And you had, you know, three holders, four holders, five holders. You had a real community thing if you wanted to uh, as far as, Crapping in, in crappers and everything like that. But anyway, after one of them reached a certain level, they were pulled out, of, an empty one was put in, and the new kid on the block, mm -hmm. or somebody who was in trouble, had to burn shit. There's yep. no other word for it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Now, the standard combination was, I think, four or five parts diesel and one part, one part gas. And you set it on fire and stirred it until it was nothing but a crust and you emptied it. Well, there was always some wise ass, excuse my French, who would tell the new kid, put five parts of gasoline right. in one part, it would blow up. And in one of my aid books, an individual got hit by a flying flaming turd, but it was not worth a purple heart. Uh -huh. Even though it's whatever. <laughs> but that, and, and that's the reason everything smelled. You, you, at 2,000 feet, Vietnam was very nice. But if you got below 2,000 feet in a helicopter, you started having all of this. Of course, they put all their night soil on their, their rice paddies. We were in the jungle most of the time, so it, we didn't have that. But when you got back, I mean, you had this smell. Well, what, and, I, what I told people about uh, Baghdad is it smelled like uh, trash, burning trash, and shit. And when they figure out how to burn <laughs> shit, it'll have four smells. Well, that, that was, <laughs> that's it right there. With, with this picture. <laughs> All right. That, that's the way it was. All right, 25. Here's Mama San. Here's what I call the face of Asia. God help this woman. And I mean, this was at High Lang Village 
after we this was in the middle of tent we had blown up the village torn it up and i was supposed to go in and hold a uh, med cat and make them on our be happy one of our platoons went in there and got ambushed during this stay and they a lot of people got killed but this woman god only knows what she has seen and been through but this is face of asia uh, uh, right there 26 okay this is we are this is right at this time we're probably in alaska this is uh, the port side that's the left side starboard side is the right side this is looking at the left side of c-141 that we flew from fort campbell to uh, fairbanks then to yokohama then into tonsonute gotcha 27 okay every time that this is a back and we're, we're going home and we've got the jeep and everything like that and every time we stopped on highway one it was like hordes of ants bust their hearts all these kids would come out with mama son or papa son and everything like that and of course they had sores all over everywhere most of them weren't wearing any you know bottoms or right. little kids and run around barefoot and all that other stuff but we are giving penicillin to this kid but i hope he did well but we as far as i know we didn't kill anybody all right 28 okay this is where sally uh to let us uh, soak our wounds and everything like that, uh, we all went out to the beach to soak our wounds and get sunburned. All right. And this is a right opposite of Huey, uh in the middle of Tet. Right. Right. Tet's already going. 29. Here we're cooking that concoction of canned shrimp, shrimp and, and tomato soup. <laughs> I didn't kill him. All right. Like that. 30. Okay, here is uh, a bunker at uh, Sally. And uh, you can see the the rods and everything, trying to support the sandbags and all this other sort of Keep thing. Keep them from caving yeah. in, 31. Uh, this is at Evans. I am about to go. It, it's. I didn't know what the devil I was doing, uh, you know. Well, you didn't have your finger on the trigger. No, thank God, one way or the other. But we were, uh, my thing at this time, I was brigade, sur- I was brigade surgeon, and all I did was re- put numbers and statistics and make sure they were the right numbers and the right statistics and this sort of thing there. Uh, you know, uh, I hope nobody will get me, but it was frowned upon to report venereal disease because that reflected on the command capacity right. of the higher ups. So we had an awful lot of post nasal drip with the urethra. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I mean, boys are going to be boys and girls are going to be girls and, you know, whatever. It's a war right? zone. It's a war zone. I, and, and it's the 60s. Well, whatever. No, it's a war zone. <laughs> yeah, it's still the 60s. Be boys. Yeah. Girls going to be girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 32. Okay, here, I, I don't have, uh, this is at Sally, uh, uh, and uh, this is an AK, and I don't have my hand on the trigger. <laughs> 33. Uh, this is our thing at Sally. The interesting thing about this particular picture is uh, we had, I was on the right, uh, left side looking in, our uh, S5. Uh, uh, Sergison was in the back side and Munoz was on the right side. Okay. Before this picture was made, we didn't have sandbags around this small tent. This is a GP small tent mm-hmm. and everything like that. And so when, when we get probed or whatever, uh, we just roll out under the, the uh, uh, leaves or the flaps of the tent and the bunker was right behind it. Well, we were gone. Circus and I were gone on a med cap thing, civil action thing, whatever. Came back, and uh, while we were gone, uh, the command came down and said, you've got to sandbag these tents. Well, that night or the next night, we got hit. Uh, we Instead of rolling out, we nearly tore the tent down because we couldn't get out right. because we had sandbags, and it was it was one of these Keystone cop type things trying to get out of that I can, tent. I can imagine so. With, with sandbags. 34? Yeah, here's uh, at Sally. Here, our tent hadn't been sandbagged yet. Right. Okay. All right. 35? Okay, here's, uh, okay. Uh, Beckwith and I, here's Beckwith's head. Uh, we're going out. They've ambushed some people, and we've got some KIA ambushes, and he wanted me to go with him. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, above Highland, uh, Lanco Village. Okay, 36. Okay, here is the retirement. Beckwith is leaving. Another guy's coming in. I'm crying because I'm missing Beckwith uh, and and this sort of thing there. Uh, I was told as soon as Beckwith got off this fire base for me to get my white ass off this fire base, this man did not want to see me again. What so man? The, the new guy. The, the new guy, the new lieutenant colonel. 
who will remain nameless. Now, the interesting thing about... Well, you can name him. Fuck that guy. Uh, well, whatever. What does that mean? Don't, don't worry about that. Okay, fair enough. Now, what you're seeing down here is the road right down yonder. At 12 o'clock there on the picture. Right. Uh, I think that yeah, that is the road. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's the road. We've got rice paddies. Off to your left, mm -hmm. off to your left, was where the sniper across from Hill 88 was. Gotcha. Now, whether this was myth or reality, I don't know, but <laughs> everybody was told, don't kill the sniper over there. <laughs> now, okay, Beckwith retires, or he goes, he's going back to, to Hawaii and wherever else he goes there. This is, this is Beckwith right here. Looking straight up, yeah, looking okay, right up there, center, and this is the, the new picture. guy over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, anyway, uh, when I was told to get off campus there, so to speak, uh, my uh, aide we had an FLA frontline ambulance, so they put me in the back of the ambulance, covered me up with with uh, flag jackets, and we ran like hell down that road to get me by the sniper. <laughs> and so life goes on. Oh my gosh, shot. I don't know whether he got shot or not, but. All right. I mean, the, the new guy. All right. He told me to get out of there. 37? It's okay. more of the same ceremony? Yeah, more of the same ceremony. 38? Uh, I'm, I'm squinting, but I'm really crying. Uh, and you can see he's got his hand on me. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I well, hate it. Don't hate it. talk about this. Like, what's going on right here? Like, He's leaving. Beckwith. Beckwith is leaving, okay? I am scared. I am tired. I want to go home. My hand's been crushed. I've got kidney stones. I got hemorrhoids, and I've got I think malaria a month or two earlier. He asked me if I wanted to go uh, uh, back and be on the the cadre at Benning. Uh, I told him no, <laughs> and I didn't realize what he was going to do. But, Meaning starting Delta yeah, Force. I wish I had, I guess, but I was just tired and scared. Yeah, of course. Any anybody anybody would have been. And, like, the way you've spoken to me ab about Beckwith is, uh, is, it's like half like, half like dad and half like Superman. And, Good combination. Uh, and, uh, and, I mean, how many people in their entire life have ever been around somebody that motivated and inspired and challenged and, you know, them like he did with you? So, it's a it's a, a fantastic and wonderful thing, you know, and yeah. that's why I wanted you to talk about what was going on in this picture because I knew what was going on in this picture, and uh, well, I, I miss him to this day. Yeah, I really do. Well, I mean, it like me for breaking down. No, 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 absolutely. Be, no, it's uh, Charlie. Is this is this is real? Like, like. You know, when, when people think about the military, when they think about Vietnam, when they think about veterans, when they think about Charlie Beckwith or Delta Force or whatever, these are, like, you understand that man. Like, for for you to know that he went on to start Delta Force and all that stuff, you're like, of course. You know, that's, yeah. you know, who else? Who else? If right. if not that guy. And um, and so for you to, to share time with him. And, well, uh, the thing that bothered me about Beckwith is uh, is the military and the administration fucked over him so badly. Yeah, yeah, they they, they do that. fucked the man. They really destroyed him. They, that's what they do yeah. with with strong people. Right. Yeah, they want you to to bow. But 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 no, right. that's that's fantastic, Charlie. It's fantastic. Yeah. Let's see what else? We got. Okay, we're back getting water. Okay. <laughs> and I'm digging more, a bunker. More posing. I'm digging a bunker. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's a uh, 42 in the jungle there. somewhere and I'm looking like an idiot. The 42, 43. And, uh, okay. This, uh, this is the bunker that caved in at Bathstone. All right. 44. Okay. Uh, well, 45. We're at Bathstone. 46. I'm going to 175. I pulled the lanyard. They let me pull the lanyard one time. <laughs> then it's a howitzer. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 175. Yeah. Right. self propel 175. Uh, nice. 47. When people say that they've shot a big gun, I've shot a big gun. <laughs> right. It's, it don't get much bigger than that. 48. Uh, we're, we're, I think, God, I don't know where we are. We're right. In jungle. 49. Here, we're, we're, you know, here, that's a combination of sweat and probably rain. Right. And just the whole thing. We're on some somewhere, somewhere. I'm in the jungle. Well, I hear all these stories of guys that threw their M16 down and picked up AK-47s. Did you ever see anybody doing that? 
I, I, I have heard the stories. I said, have you seen? No, I have not Did you seen see that? that? No. Okay. We, uh, first of all, if an AK-47 had been uh, thrown down, you would have had 25 bull bull colonels trying to get it. Yeah, right. One way or the other. Right. Uh, as far as that's right, because everybody wanted those as, as war trophies. Yeah, sure. Okay. But, uh, 50? you know, AK-47 is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a good weapon. Yeah. 51? Lorraine. This is us going. This is the name of the operation. Gotcha. Was Eagle Thrust gotcha. and going, going to Vietnam. Gotcha. 52? Uh, that's flying over Alaska or somewhere. 53? Okay, here, okay, that's, I'm not in this one. Okay, here is Jackie Justice. Mm -hmm. Here is uh, Terry Spielberg. And you see, we did look a lot, a lot alike there. Mm -hmm. Don't right. um, he's good, he's dead. No, bless his heart. But I, I don't. And this is um, uh, uh, Van Meter, our our chaplain. Well, it's from right to left, one way to the other. Okay, uh, fifty-four. And here I am. We're in Fairbanks. Uh, at the Air Force Base there in Fairbanks, uh, waiting to go. Thinking that was probably the last time you're going to be cold for a while. You, you well, it, I, <laughs> it was. Uh, they had a lot of snow. Well, I'm just saying, like mm -hmm. when I went to when I went to Iraq, I didn't think it was going to be cold. I almost froze to death right, in Iraq. Right. Like if you, and uh, so you might have thought to yourself, "I'm going to the jungle. It's the last time I'll be cold for a while." Well, maybe. but you know, as far as cold goes, it rained. But when we were at Son, S O N, in the monsoon. Seven nights and eight days of rain with soaking wet and everything caving in. I, I, it was incredible. And, and, and really, Tet, the entire month of, of, of February of 68, it was raining. Uh, you were cold and wet. Yeah. But, uh, it, was just, it was just amazing how when you're wet, it's, it's a mess. Yeah, 55. Oh, here we are. Here's Munoz and myself. I gave him Munoz. <laughs> 50, oh, now we're at uh, Chanton. Chanton, yeah. picture one. Yeah. We just... Uh, we're, we're so cherry. It's pitiful. <laughs> Two. Uh, that is on a trip that I took with the commander, brigade commander. He was scouting some stuff. Mm -hmm. Three. Uh, and this this is out looking for fire bases and everything like that. All right. You can already see what's happened down here. Uh, these trees are dead, too, from Agent Orange right. down there. All right. uh, this is above Tay Nen and on Lock Lock Nen and Nui Ba Den's in there. All right. Four. Uh, this uh, is, uh, let's see, somewhere landing at, a, I think, a Special Forces base. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go on. Somewhere. All right, five. Uh, this is at Chanton. Six. Uh, this is the thing at Chanton. And this had been a, 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 a French Foreign Legion uh, thing at one time, but they still had mines in the, the perimeter around it, supposedly, so none, none of us went out in there. A lot of people don't realize the French were over there before us. Right, and I've got pictures of, of, of some of their vehicles that were destroyed or left behind. Seven. Okay, this, okay, you, okay, this is Michelin plantations, I was told. And all of these dead trees are rubber trees that apparently we killed with Agent Orange, I was told. Mm -hmm. And this is on a flight up to... Uh, um, unlock, lock, in, a tay in, all in through there. But this is uh, see the the problem with these forests is is uh, the NVABC could hide in them, <laughs> right? And, and very well, and you know, um, so they killed the trees there. Yeah, eight. Okay, this is um, at at Chanton, C H O N T H A N. Nine. Uh, same place. Ten. Uh, we're going somewhere. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, probably John John. This is it. Oh. There was an airstrip there. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of right over there. Okay. And, About uh, 10 o'clock on the know, photo. Twelve. And here again, we were, here's Sergison and myself, and we were digging a hole in the ground. Thirteen. Okay, now here's part of the, the French Foreign Legion armament. That would a blowed up, armored car. Blowed up tank of some sort? Armored car pro or okay. tank at or wait or whatever. Right, Not right, very big. Right, right. 14. Okay, and here is the trees that were killed. Yeah, 15. Uh, here is uh, uh, that landing strip. I think I showed you we were coming into this. Mm -hmm. 16. Okay, this is, we were reconning. There's a strip, there's a special forces uh, camp right off to our left mm -hmm. in this, and I was with the commanding officer of the brigade at that time, and we he wanted me to fly around with him, so right. we did. 17. Okay, uh, this is Kuchi. Uh, uh, that was it was um, that was just Kuchi okay. the fire base. Eighteen. Uh, this is uh, again Chanton. This, oh, this stuff right in here. 
uh, all of this was triple concertina at the bottom of the picture uh, right at the bottom excuse me at the bottom of the picture that was keep them out but not let you go in because supposedly they were still uh, landmines yeah french foreign legion landmines and yep. 19 and this is a very poor excuse for a hooch or a hut I thought it was a uh, livestock pen or something. Well, it, it kind of was. And we were the livestock. <laughs> but that's where we spent the night at Chantan right. and, and built that up. Here again, we're going on a trip. 20. This would have been a, a, a maybe a Kit Carson scout. I don't know whether that was Arvin or not. Uh, anyway, they would go along with us. Cause we didn't 21. Think, uh, these are two soul brothers um, engaging comedy, I guess. All right. I don't think he had 22. Any. Okay, here is... Um, a uh, uh, armored personnel carrier from French Foreign Legion got knocked out. And a little helicopter. Yeah, a little light observation helicopter. I flew around in on one or two occasions. 23. Okay, this again is the Michelin Plantation. You can right. see everything around it. Now we're at Coochie, picture one. Uh, okay, with this, uh, this is, I think we're just out and around. I don't. All right, two. Okay, this is at Coochie. This is a self propelled either 8 inch or 155. Mortar, uh, basically a, a mobile mortar. Right. And this is in front of the 101st uh, 2nd Brigade headquarters. Gotcha. Right there. Three. And this this is all 25th. All right. Four. Uh, all of their stuff here, a helicopter flying over. All right. Five. We're downtown Coochie, and the worst thing that can happen to a young troop is eat on the economy. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. you get all sorts of bad diarrhea. Man, did you warn me about that before <laughs> Baghdad? And <laughs> man, did I not listen to you. <laughs> so, okay. Six. Uh, here's just burning poop. <laughs> Seven. Here's downtown Coochie. And that was the site of a lot of mess uh, during uh, Tet. Mm-hmm. On both. Uh, and here, this is uh, at um, Coochie. This, these are all, this is what's known as a target rich environment. Right. If you got one, two, two rockets, uh, you know, they, you didn't, they were one, two, two rockets, but I don't think you had the Katusha, uh-huh. you know, mobile thing where you could do 10 at a time or whatever. Right. And that, I think the way I was told, they'd take two bamboo poles, time in the middle, light the fuse, aim it. And but if you could get one, two, one, two, twos, as a troop, you could not defend against. An 82 millimeter mortar, you could build a bunker that hopefully just give you a headache and hearing problem. But you, th- this was a target-rich environment with, with Chinooks. Right. Right, Thalia. And, and this, this is Coochie itself, the 25th Infantry uh, Division. All right, 10. Right. They had tunnels. Let me tell you on this one. Okay, right. back go, to go 9. Back. There were tunnels that the VC had built, so I've been told, all under this complex to include the division commander's uh, hooch, is what I was told. And you had hospitals, you had places, you had trucks, all between, way between Coochie and Saigon. And how they did that, Lord only knows, but they did it. The okay. laterite Ten. soil, I guess. This is just a rice field. Eleven. Uh, this is a, a very futile attempt at building a bunker. Twelve. You in country. Uh, one, uh, one is probably a C-123. The other one's probably a caribou. Mm-hmm. Two different tail configurations. Thirteen. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a, uh, a French Foreign Legion uh, bunker. On the way to Coochie. Okay, 14. Uh, this was at Th- Tan Sanut as we left town. Right. This was at Coochie. 15. This, right. 16. Uh, this is where I stayed at Coochie. No, nice. Oh, it was. We didn't know. I mean, I, I you know, just everything <laughs> one way or the other. All right, 17. Here's Quan Coochie. Okay, uh, 18. Uh, just Coochie. 19. Downtown Coochie. 20. Uh, here I am. This is the bunker that I... Rose, I didn't go into when we did have a raid and everything like. You can see the burning poop in the background. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> nice, his accents the photo nicely. <laughs> Twenty one. Okay, here was a, a kind of a little sick call. We were these were uh, two of my medics, and uh, uh, here again the kids who always wanted candy, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, attention. But mista, here again, they, they they could tell you very, you know, they could t- go tell Mama Son who would tell everybody else who you were and how many of you were and all that other right, sort of thing. Right, right. Twenty two. Uh, we're just sitting around eating sea rations. 23. Uh, in front of the 101st, 2nd Brigade there at Coochie. 24. Uh, shaving. 25. Uh, this is a bunker that we made very poorly. Under know. a road, like a culvert? Uh, pretty close to it okay. uh, at the time. 26. Uh, this was living in, uh, this was, you know, this was silk panty sleeping environment. I was, the, 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 the cot, the mattress. Uh, the the uh, skidding net, right. the whole thing. I, that's just 
I didn't live that good again ever. <laughs> Twenty seven. <laughs> same thing. Twenty eight. Inside, you know, we were. Twenty nine. Right, that's where we had our, of course, your, yeah. your the uh, whoopee. Your, yeah, your your uh, jungle. Uh, it, your uncle blanket. You yeah. Know, one 30. Uh, this is a pisser. This is where you would pee. And let's see if we see another one. Okay. 31. 32. If we Okay, let's go back to that right there. Okay. Back to 30. This is an in-ground pisser. Uh, one of uh, the pissers near the talk there at Coochie uh, was a 155 canister put in the ground. Now, the water table is very high, so it wasn't that deep in there. And a senior officer walked by this pisser, piss tube, and the smell of aroma assaulted his nostrils. So that night uh, when we all met, this senior officer assigned a lieutenant colonel to watch me as I took an Army issue wire brush, an Army issue old Dutch cleanser, and clean it up. So Why? It, it, huh? What, what did you do to make that guy mad? I never liked him to begin with, but after that, I really didn't like him. But that is the way it was. Why would he have you do it? Because I was the brigade surgeon in charge of sanitation. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Okay. All right, 31. Never felt the same way about the man. Yeah. 32. Uh, here again, this is all it could be. Yeah, 33. Uh, these buses right here, would I've been loaded... First of all, you got the food, all the bread, don't eat it. But these buses probably were loaded with ammunition, 122 rockets, right. and everything like that, you know, under in and all that yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. 34. Uh, here was probably the best place to take a shower I ever had in my year stay in Vietnam. These these were uh, fuel fuel tanks from airplanes. Right. Warm up, you can, water was pumped up there. Then you could go in and take a shower. It was just, it was wonderful. Nice. Was wonderful. 35. Here again, Coochie. 36. Uh, this is more of the artillery uh, parade, mm -hmm. so to speak, for the 20th. 37. Uh, this is uh, 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 this is going to be Quan Tree, uh, not not Quan Tree, but Huey, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the, this is the middle of Tet. Okay. And Huey, right there. All right. 38. Uh, here is um, an attempt at a bunker. You can see we improved. <laughs> went on. 39. Uh, this is Coochie. All right. 40. Uh, this is uh, getting ready to go somewhere. That's a shitload of helicopter. Yeah. 41. Coochie. 42. Coochie. Oh, black, uh, no, hold it. Just, well, yes, it was Coochie. Because out in the back, you can see uh, Nui Ba Den. That's Tay Nen up there. Okay. That's Black Virgin Mountain. During Tet, okay, I was told, okay, we own the top, they own the bottom. We own the top, we own the bottom, they own the middle. And during Tet, there was a, something like a 23 or 25 member radio relay station on top up there, and 22 of them were killed during Tet Damn. because uh, the other side had the they had tunneled all in all in through all over there. Damn, 43. Uh, these are B-52 strikes and stuff like wow. that, and uh, just uh, you know these are I think this is war zone A, C, D, B, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. These are just runs of of, of B-52. That's crazy. Uh, one way the other. 44. Uh, here again, this is out from Coochie. 45. These are just the rice fields. 46. And here would be a, a major highway for us. Now, you can see the vegetation has been cut off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as much, and, and ways to pull off yep. and get out of the way, uh, you know, yep. if you could, mm -hmm. if you were being attacked. 47. Uh, here again, burning yep. shit. 48. Burning shit. <laughs> 49. Bunker. 50. Uh, okay, a, uh, a 122 got the ammo dump. And uh, a lot of ammunition went up, and that's what happened there. Oh, wow. 51. Uh, a lot of burning ammo, ammo at Coochie. 52, 53. Uh, that's where it stayed. 54. And here again, just uh, yeah. the bomb runs. 55. And, uh, this is out from Coochie on a little op operation we went on. 56. Same thing there. We're just learning the, the rules of engagement and all 57. that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, that's Coochie. All right. 58. Downtown Coochie. 59. Okay. This is uh, where the higher-ups lived, and that's the talk over there. So on the right is where the higher-ups yeah, lived yeah. and left is the talk. Uh, yeah. Okay. 60. Coochie. And you can see the perimeter oh. around it mm -hmm. uh, and everything like that. 61. Uh, this is a road up to Tay Nan, 
and you can see you had fire bases kind of relay mm-hmm. stations along mm-hmm. uh, because that was a major highway from Kuchi to Tainan. 62? Uh, here's Mama San, and uh, she's got her stick. And What's the stick that, for? Uh, that Well, that, that can carry food, that can carry oh. uh, pots, gotcha, human gotcha. feces. Uh, she can carry anything. She'll put it on her shoulder and just go right down, just DD mile right down the road there with gotcha. that thing on her shoulder. And, and here that, again, this is uh, this is a Coochie Convoy 001. Yeah, you know, we're going from Saigon up to Coochie. So this is a new series of photos. Yeah, okay. And two. Uh, that's a meeting of convoys. We go up. We're we're newbies. We, uh, you know, we just we just cherry. God, we're bad cherry. Your tanks had to stay where tanks could stay. Right. They couldn't get in the mountains and everything like that. Of course, they had the lights and all that other sort of thing. Uh, you had the PSP uh, on the side because your RPGs were, were shape charges, well, I understood mm-hmm. it. Right. And if that would detonate the RPG, it maybe it wouldn't penetrate right. the tank shell itself. But here again, you'd still maybe blow the track. Right. I don't know. But uh, yep. I was three. Uh, water buffalo. Uh, and uh, a water buffalo was worth more if it got run over and killed than a kid was, supposedly, what I was told. Oh, wow. Uh, Four. Uh, here are four individuals pumping water in the rice paddies. They're observing the radio tower and deciding how they're going to blow it apart. I assume, <laughs> I, anyway. Five. Uh, here's downtown uh, Saigon. Six. Uh, here's going up there. You can see the wire and everything like that. Seven. Uh, here are the Sicolo, uh, the, you know, the little scooters that everybody rode around on. And you'd see maybe two or three people on those things. At right. the time, they'd come along, maybe throw a grenade and take off and get out of, out of the way. Eight. Uh, uh, here again, uh, this is at, uh, well, it's going up to Coochie. You can see the, the trucks and the, the uh, bus mm-hmm. there. Nine. Bus coming your way. And say loaded, probably, this is before Tet. These people are loading up with rockets and mortar rounds and God knows what else. Right. Uh, for the local villa, uh, local, you know. Right. Because we were, you know, basically, from what I know, the entire month of February, we were kind of compromised like surrounded and kind of cut off for right, a long, right, right. long time. Ten. Here are the rice fields. Eleven. Here's downtown Saigon. Neat picture. Twelve. Here's going up in convoy. Thirteen. More water buffaloes. When when if they would stampede, there was a mess. Particularly if you, you know, put out CS gas or something oh, yeah. like that. Put tear gas if you did that. Humans will stampede if you put CS <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, uh, but they Fourteen. Run over you. Going over a bridge that had a had a bunker there guarding the bridge. Fifteen. Uh, nice C one thirty. Bless its heart. I loved them. <laughs> Sixteen. Downtown. You know the interesting thing about this picture right here. Here is a very stylish Vietnamese woman, mm-hmm. in whatever they call those outfits, with her umbrella. She's she's sun. I, I, I applaud her desire to protect her uh, skin from the sun, but she might walk walk three or four more paces, squat, pull one britches leg up, and let it. Let her hang out, whatever need to be hang, hung out of time. Shake her leg and keep on going. I guess, you know, you didn't have public toilets. You just mm-hmm. had the streets. Wow. Here's 17. a funeral. Now, is this a funeral with some corpse in it, or is this everybody bringing rockets and mortars and everything to town? Right. And right. I'm not being facetious yep. on this or sacrilegious, yep. because in in their burial grounds, they hid, oh, yeah. you know, all yep. sorts of armaments and everything like that. Eighteen. Um, okay, this is going. This is coming out of Benoit. Nineteen. Uh, that's Tonsonute. Twenty. Uh, this is g- coming out of Coochie going to. I'm coming out of Benoit going to Coochie. Twenty-one. Okay, this is after Tet, and uh, this is uh, Saigon, if I remember correctly. Twenty-two. Yeah, because we we okay. What we're doing now? They pulled us out of Coochie, put us in C-130s, and flew us up to Fubai mm-hmm. uh, about the middle uh, third week in January. And I was at Fubai. Really, can't, uh, it was LZ El Paso. Was uh, we were opcon when we went up there to the first air cab way because they had helicopters. We were. Um, they had air assets, and we really didn't. So we robbed con to them. So when we came in, it was LZ El Paso, which became Camp Eagle, and Fubai was the airstrip that supplied all that to include Way. So we got in 130s, went up there, and then we had Tet afterwards. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, 23. 
Uh, this is probably downtown Saigon. 24? Uh, this, that's us going somewhere. We had a helicopter out. I don't know where we were really being escorted by the helicopter. But the thing of it is here is the rice fields, and then you had the, the, the planter's home or the little farm home or whatever you want to call it. Now, in the basement of these homes, they would hide a lot of stuff. And uh, as far as arms and ammunition and, and this, you know, that's whatever, that's the right. way it was. Right. 25. Uh, here's the funeral again. 26. Uh, this is going to up to Coochie. 27. Uh, this is a village going to up when we up to Coochie. 28. Uh, here's flying over somewhere between <laughs> Fairbanks and Yokohama. 29. Okay. Uh, this is going through, uh, I think this is Coochie because it's not... It's from, uh, you know, just dust roads and everything like that. Right. 30. And he, they uh, uh, had some sort of cotton or something, rags in this stuff. And here the little horses that they they would carry. 31. Uh, carry them. Here again, that's going out of 141. 32. Here the water buffaloes. And, 33. Uh, they're convoying up to Coochie from Tays- uh, uh, Tonsonote. 34. And that's just on the road to Coochie. And then okay, here let's... Again. let's uh, Let's just take a break for a second. Okay. We've, been, we've been talking for a while. This might okay. be a good, good, good okay. break stop. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we've been going for about forty-five minutes now, or something like that. What? An hour and thirty. An hour and thirty. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we'll just time out right there, uh, guys. We hope you are enjoying this um, this this photo album. Just uh, with with from Doc here, it's this oh, is amazing, amazing stuff, and uh, so we'll 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 stop right now. We'll we'll pick up again on the with the next video and give everybody a, a, a minute to sort this out. It's ninety minutes you've been going through these photos. Well, I, whatever, we glad to. <laughs> no, no, we'll we'll continue, but we got to kind of you know break this into a couple of videos. Okay. Well, I didn't know we were uh, get such detail, uh, so. Uh, uh, Thank you, Doc, for sharing the photos with you. We'll, we'll do the rest of the photos on the next video. Um, Dr. Charles Heron, James Jager, Protector Response, reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. <laughs>